So uh, welcome, thank you everybody. Uh, this is a charity incentive stream. Uh, you guys raised 30,000 for St. Baldrick's Foundation and this is the second incentive. The first one was the head shaving and the beard transplant. Anyway, we're playing a game <laughs> called Hot Ones, Truth or Dad, the game. Uh, but the rules for that game are usually the que a question is asked and you either have the option to answer the question or take some of the hot sauce. The twist is we're going to ask a question, you have to have some hot sauce, and then we're each gonna take turns answering the question. We're, ra we're ramping up fast. We're, ramping up fast. Really we're going from holding hands to anal, my dudes. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> Say that one more time. What is the most intense drug you've taken, and how was it? Um, so, I do have a, uh, like, I remember one of the instances. So, I think it was one of the first, first times I ever smoked weed in my life. And my sister Katrina and I got, my, my biological dad, who has passed away, way long time by then, had, like, this antique mahogany, rich mahogany box that, like, held pipes. It had, like, little divots on the sides where, you know, tobacco pipes would sit. Oh, okay. Yeah, like yeah, a exactly. tobacco box. And then yeah, it would yeah. open, and you could have, like, your little brush to clean your pipes or whatever. So my mom had that on display, and it was, like, beautiful. I probably ivory. I don't know. Like, it looked pearlescent, weird pipes and stuff. So we stole one, and we were like, we're gonna smoke drugs out of this. Because we had found weed in my mom's underwear drawer. I don't know why we were there, but we found weed there, and we were like, we're gonna do it. We cut it up with a butcher knife on my mom's cutting board. And then we get my dad's pipe and we like stuff it and it's all falling through because tobacco is like stringy and not like ground up weed at all. It doesn't sit. You need a much smaller hole in the bottom of the bowl. So it was all falling through into our mouths. And we were like, we got to we got to like do a screen. So our genius idea was to cut a chunk of my parents' brand new screen door out. Mm. <laughs> the bottom left corner. That's thinking though. <laughs> Just going to say don't do it. If you're stopping this story for some reason right here, don't do this. It's not good. They're, little did, you know, X amount of years old Katie know, screen doors are coated in like rust proofing and chemicals and plastic coating and they have fiberglass weaved within them nowadays to protect from even smaller bugs. There it is. Yeah. And we're so excited and we both, we smoke the whole bowl down. We, I, we start fucking hallucinating that the beach is blue and the sky is purple and the water is drowning us in the sand and we're laying in the sand like undulating <laughs> in it together. <laughs> And then the last, I don't remember even getting back into the house, but I remember laying down on the couch and my vision was like TV static, salt and pepper static, except for a pinpoint. And that's all I could see. So I started walking around the house like this and talking to my parents like this. Probably the most intense high I've had in my life. Nice. Yeah. Don't do that. All right. What's, what's the drunkest thing you did in college? We bought like a 24 pack of Rolling Rock. Uh, we rented Ghost Ship. If anybody's seen that. Woo! Yeah, I think I had about one. I, there was only about 10 that were drank. So we had about 14 left. And I said, I'm not letting these go to waste. So I drank 14 Rolling Rocks. We decided that movie was shit and we need to return it to Blockbuster. <laughs> Blockbuster. I'm gonna take you back. I'm give my money dumb. back. She see if I will. Yeah. So we, oh, yeah. we all go, we take the movie back, and I end up knocking over shelving. Oh. With all the, the whole, uh, all the movies and stuff on it. Like I knocked over rock. a whole fucking one. What, one of those things that are like 10 feet long? Yeah. <laughs> I knocked up. So that is not a light over. thing. That's not like an end cap. No. That's like you a wooden, like, particle yeah. board thing. I goes, had to put some. Good dude! I put 14 rolling rocks into it. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what movie we got. I think I ended up, like, after we left Blockbuster, saying, like, I don't want to watch movies anyway. I'm going home. And my friend walked me home. I didn't make it very far before I was like, this is where I'm going to sleep now, is in this gutter. <laughs> well, so I laid in the gutter. He took my arm and dragged me <laughs> into the house, and I slept in the living room. Dragged you, like, on the sidewalk? Or? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, across the street into our apartment. Oh, okay. Have you ever gotten in a physical fight? If so, what happened? I did work at a bar where I was the only male there, and I'm not saying females can't handle themselves, I'm just saying physically we're bigger, usually. And I was bigger than 
well bigger than anyone that worked there at the time. So if there was a fight that broke out between two dudes, I would jump in just because, like, I was the only one that could, really. Uh, and I remember there was this one time, and I would jump, I jumped on this, or uh, these guys were fighting, and one had, like, you know, fallen onto the other one, and he was, like, you know, trying to, trying to punch him and stuff while he was on the ground. And uh, I grabbed him, and I, I, I hauled him off of the other guy, and I got in between them, and uh, the other guy was still on the ground. And uh, so he was, like, getting up, and I was like, okay, time to go, it's time to go, enough of that. And this dude, I was looking at this dude, and he was like, that motherfucker boy. I was like, I don't give a shit about what happened, man. Just get out of the bar. It doesn't matter what happened. I don't care who's wrong or who's right. You're both leaving now. And then I was like, and you, and the guy had, had gotten up, popped me right in the fucking face. I just <laughs> tried, and you, sir, pull, pull, and fuck. <laughs> You're going to get it now, motherfucker. And I just, I jumped at him. Got him, like, jumped him around his head, got him in a headlock, and I hauled his ass down the stairs, like, fucking just in a right headlock. After he clocked and I, like, I made sure to, like, ram his head into oh, a Kino shit. machine. I just went, clank! Oh my god. And then, uh, eventually, like, I had uh, a couple of regulars by that time around me, ready to, you know, help me out and stuff. So I finally let the guy go, and I was like, and I swear to God, my voice cracked or something. I was like, "Now you get the fuck out, motherfucker! <laughs> get out! <laughs> you trick! Get out!" <laughs> and he's like, and he looked because I had like two or three other people, and he's like, Move. And he like he left. Now we could do okay. What's the most scared you've ever been? Um, I went to Africa when I was like seventeen for a school trip, one of the people with us was from Kenya, and that's where we were at. Okay. And he grew up there. He was a Maasai tribe member. And oh, okay. so we were supposed to go stay in his, his former village for a night in the huts. We get there, and we're looking around, and then I see, like, our teachers and the um, village, like, elders are talking, and they're really serious. And then our teachers come over, and they say... We can't stay the night here. Uh, and we're like, why not? Like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have to be able to stay the night here. And they're like, no, there was a lion spotted nearby and they don't feel safe having you here because you don't really know how to handle that. Like they do. And they're bringing all the livestock into the, into the hut with them to sleep tonight. And there's not a lot of room here. <laughs> so we're like, okay. What? In the meantime, it's getting dark. And we need to make it a, about a mile back to the cars. So that's what we did. And we had to cross this creek. And everyone's flipping the fuck out, of course. Like, they're panicking. No shit. So people are, like, tripping in the creek we had to, the river we had to go past, go through. They're tripping all over the place. And I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, no one's taking any kind of control here. So I stand in the river and I help people across. I'm like, why am I doing this? So that's why I was so terrified. Because I'm like, I'm going to be the last one. They pick off the, the slowest and the smallest and the weakest. And that's me. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for raising money for St. Uh, Baldrick's for doing that. Uh, $20,000 and went all the way to $30,000. So thank you for doing that. I uh, also want to say...